AFK journey dropped last week, and if you're a new player that's just picked it up, trying to figure out how to build teams and which heroes to use can seem pretty overwhelming. Well, today we're going to be talking about different team building techniques and how you can make the best progress using the right heroes on your team. To understand how to build a good team, we need to understand how to win a fight. And that's simple, you just have to reduce the opponent's health to zero. The health bar is the green line above the hero, and below them is a thinner line and that's energy. When that energy bar gets full, which needs 500 energy, the hero whose energy is charged will do an ultimate attack, which is a really powerful skill that can change the dynamic of the fight in your favor. So you want to get as many ultimates off as you can to defeat the opponent. Now, another key piece of information that you need to know is the faction bonus. You gain different increases to attack and HP if you're using multiple heroes from the same faction. You can either have three heroes from the same faction to get one bonus, three heroes from the same faction, and then two others from a matching one to get a slightly better bonus. You can have four from the same faction for an even stronger bonus, or you can go all in and have five heroes from the same faction. Now, don't get distracted by this and try and just funnel yourself down into one faction, though, because the returns will be diminishing, and sometimes it's just better to have a good synergistic lineup than just force into a faction advantage. Faction advantages can be nice though if you're looking to edge out a fight, but do make sure you prioritize synergy across heroes first. Now one thing that makes AFK Journey different from other idle games I've played is fights are dynamic, which means heroes are going to move around and move across the battlefield, prioritizing the enemy closest to them most of the time. However, sometimes they'll target specific heroes, but that's very unique to that character. Let's assume that oftentimes enemies will go for the closest opponent. In that case, you want to have yourself a tank on the front line who can focus enemies' attacks. And if you want to see who an enemy is focusing, you can clip the ellipse up here and then push this button at the top, and that will tell you where an enemy's focus is going to be drawn. So you can see if I put this hero over here, these guys are going to focus him. However, if I move another hero to the side, they'll actually split their focus across the two of them. Typically then, it's a good idea to have a tank right at the front who can focus all the attention of the opponents, giving the rest of your heroes much needed breathing room so that they can use their abilities and powers properly. So that leads us to our first important role on your team. You're going to want a tank. The most popular tank in the game right now is Thorin, and that's because he's able to deal a lot of damage, he also has a lot of survivability, can steal HP from opponents, increasing his max HP, and what makes him really strong is he can resurrect after he's dead. Not to mention, he gains invulnerability from control effects when using his ult, which means lots of crowd control opponents can't really affect him when he's using his stronger abilities. These abilities combine to make him a really difficult unit to kill, and a great option if you're looking for someone on your front line. Another good alternative from the Wilder faction is Granny Dan as she has a lot of survivability and self-sustain, whilst also having a ton of control effects which are going to manipulate your opponents, slow them down, and taunt them, forcing them to attack her. This fulfills the tank role brilliantly and makes her arguably one of the best tanks in the game. And if you're after someone a little bit different, consider Brutus from the Mauler faction, as he has a lot of aggressive abilities, can taunt surrounding enemies, and right before he dies, he becomes immune to all damage for 5 seconds, making him extremely difficult to kill early on. Now, if you don't have any of those S-tier tanks, consider Lucius, as he's able to give shields not just to himself, but his allies as well, and it makes him really, really strong at giving much-needed survivability to your lineup. Or from the Mauler faction, consider Entendre, as she's also a really solid tank unit that can taunt opponents, forcing them to attack her instead. Tanks are especially useful in game modes where opponents are coming at you from the front, and also in game modes where there's multiple opponents. There might be some weird teams that don't necessarily need a tank, but almost in every situation, especially if you're just starting off, having a tank is really helpful helpful for making progress in the game. Now once you've got your front line sorted, you're going to need to bring some damage. You can't just rely on your tank to do everything. And not all tanks bring a lot of damage, although some do. So now we need to be looking at some heroes that are dedicated DPS, or damage per second heroes, that can apply a lot of pressure onto the enemy team, getting them dead quickly, which is of course the win condition of a fight. Now there are a lot of good DPSs in the game, each with their different strengths and abilities. So we're going to be covering quite a few heroes in this category, just to give you some ideas of who you could choose. From the Grave faction, you should get a Cecia early on, and she's extremely good. Even on her own, she doesn't necessarily look like a DPS, but when you read her ult, you realize she's going to summon Mr. Carlisle, a very strong undead behemoth that deals a lot of damage and gets thrown straight into the enemy backline and can crowd control them when he drops in. This can really disrupt opposing teams and take down their squishies whilst their tank is distracted by your tank. This makes her incredible at melting teams and really powerful, and also her attack speed and Mr. Carlisle's attack speed gets buffed by her too which means the damage keeps on coming out. 
However, Cecia is very ult-reliant. If she doesn't get her ult and Mr. Carlisle doesn't join the battlefield, she is going to kind of suck. So bear that in mind when engaging with a fight. But if you can get her ult up easily, she's going to shred opponents. And for A tiers in the Graveborn faction, we've got Viperion. Viperion shines when there's multiple opponents, as he's able to hit multiple of them with incredible damage over time and lifesteal them at the same time. He's very aggressive, deals a ton of burst, and early on can be a fantastic damage dealer. Considering Thorin is from the Graveborn faction as well, you could run Thorin, Cecia, and Viperion period for an amazing core of three heroes and gain that faction bonus. And later on in the game, there's Carolina, who synergizes really nicely when you've got a lot of crowd control effects on your team, and also can give some of her own, which allows her to slow down opponents with her frostbite effect. This is really good as this slows down your opponent's abilities to get ultimates, and her freeze abilities just shut down opponents entirely. Her damage pressure is also really good, so when you combine this with other crowd control, she can be absolutely devastating. Although Carolina's abilities only really begin to shine later on in the game, so I wouldn't use her early unless you can pick up a ton of copies to make her a dedicated unit. For the light bearers, Vala is a really solid option as she's able to specialize against one individual on the back line. Her mark causes her to steal their energy, which is really strong as that slows down their ult charge, and she can focus fire onto them very aggressively and get them removed. Also, she's very dynamic. She moves around the battlefield a lot, which means she can't be hunted down by tanks and stuff as easily. So she ends up being a really strong hero for that reason. If you're looking to pressure one particular enemy on an opponent's back line, Vala is great great at being a DPS to do that. But also in the Light Bearer faction are a couple A tiers who are really good at applying damage quickly. Marily is a really good example as she does great in boss fights for applying continuous damage. And Corin, again an A tier, is another great choice if you're looking to get damage quickly and efficiently onto your opponent. These two particularly shine really well in the dream fights, so if you're looking to take down a boss quickly, consider adding these to your fights to do really well. Now, another hero I wanted to mention before we move on from Lightbearers is Temesia. Now, despite being labeled a tank, she just runs around the battlefield and can be extremely annoying for your opponent to deal with. She applies a lot of damage, pushes them around, heals herself, and can be devastating in certain game modes, especially in boss fights, because she does provide a lot of damage. So if you're lucky enough to get some Temesia copies, she can be devastating early on, but do bear in mind she's not dedicated as a tank, so you'll probably need someone else to fulfill that role, because she's just going to be running all over the battlefield. And although that's kind of cool for hunting down opposing backlines, it does leave your backliners quite vulnerable. Now, in the Mauler faction, there's OD, and he's an A tier, but shines above all other DPS heroes in this faction. He's able to provide a lot of damage over time, great damage against a single target, and if you're fighting multiple opponents, he also has an execution ability against heroes when their HP drops below a certain threshold, so it can massacre an entire enemy team very quickly if you invest in him. This makes OD surprisingly powerful for an A tier, and he finds himself put on a lot of lineups for this reason. Do not sleep on this guy, he's incredibly strong. Finally, for Wilder, there's a lot of good choices for DPS. We have Aaron, who's able to provide a lot of pressure, move opponents around and force them into one specific location, immobilizing them at the same time, which can set up for some of your other DPS heroes. And he also provides a lot of damage in and of his own right as well. Another cool thing about Aaron is you can think of him as a secondary tank, as he does have the ability to gain a shield, and whilst he has it, he gets the ability to dodge and just ignore damage entirely, and that dodge rate can be as high as 80% if you invest in him. This makes Aaron a powerful jack-of-all-trades, as he can be a secondary tank, provide decent damage, and disrupt the opponents with control. I really like this guy, and if you're lucky enough to get some copies of him, try him out. If looking for a more traditional DPS though from the Wilder faction, consider Brian, as he's able to provide a lot of damage pressure quickly, but do bear in mind he's a bit of a glass cannon, so you need to protect him to get his damage off. However, once he does pop off, he can do a lot of damage and devastate the opposing team. Similar to Cecia, Brian has a summon which is his Falcon Companion, and his Falcon can provide a lot of extra damage for Brian as well to keep his pressure up. And whilst his Falcon is on the battlefield, Brian receives a buff as well. Now, Wilder has a couple A-tier DPS heroes we might want to consider. First is Lysa. Although more of a support hero, Lysa's quite strong for dealing damage pressure, and that's because she adds extra damage bonuses to your attacks. So if they do an AoE effect, she's going to give extra damage to everyone affected. So if you've got a lot of heroes that hit multiple targets on your team, Lysa can synergize brilliantly with those. Not to mention, Lysa improves the attack speed of your heroes, so that can really help for adding extra pressure in too. Overall, Lysa just massively improves your damage numbers if you use her properly, and she's really good in teams that hit a lot of opponents. And in more dedicated control teams, Arden has seen a surge in play, especially later on in the game, because he gains massive bonuses when enemies are controlled, and his damage numbers can be absolutely ridiculous. Do not sleep on this guy, as Arden can be devastating. Not to mention, he himself has some pretty strong control effects. So when combined with heroes like 
Carolina, and Aeron, Arden can be really powerful, and it's a very popular strategy in late game PvP. So there's a few DPS heroes to consider. If there's any I've missed off that you really like using, let us know in the comments section down below. But we need to move now onto the next hero style, which is healers. These heroes are going to keep you alive. Remember how HP is the most important thing in this game, because once you're dead, you can't do anything? Well, healers stop you from dying by giving your team much needed sustain. As it stands, there's a few good healers you might want to consider, so let's get into them. Probably the most traditional healer in the game, we have Hewan from the Wilder Faction. She increases your damage reduction, a little bit of haste bonuses here and there, but most importantly provides very aggressive healing over time when she does her ult. Now she's a little ult reliant, but once that ult pops, she can heal anyone on your team, no matter where they are on the battlefield. If you've got heroes like Temesia or Vala, heck, even Igor that want to jump all over the battlefield and be all over your opponents, sometimes just having someone that can heal them no matter where they are can be really powerful, and Hewan is extremely popular for this reason. Now, if your team's really good at staying close and bunched together, Smokey and Murky, this meerkat pair, can be really powerful as they have an aura around them that gives continuous healing, and when that ult pops off, that radius of the aura is going to increase, which is even stronger for heroes that have maybe ran out of the radius, and also you gain added bonus and buffs to your team as well. Now, Smokey, despite being a great healer to have, can be punished if your opponent is able to manipulate where heroes are on the battlefield, perhaps pulling them out of Smokey's radius, so just bear that in mind. But if you're able to keep your heroes bunched together around Smokey, the healing is incredible. And another popular pick is Rowan, as he has healing potions he places on his car at the start of the battlefield, and when an ally drops below 50% HP, they can drink that potion to heal themselves right back up again. This doesn't rely on any abilities or ults to activate, so they're just there whenever you need them, which makes it reliable healing. Although later on in the game, this healing isn't as consistent, so you might want to pair Rowan with another healer as well. But what makes Rowan really strong is he's able to feed energy to your team, so if you want to get more ult charges off, Rowan can really help you to get your ultimates faster. And when looking for an A tier to heal your team, look no further than Coco. Coco is able to give healing to heroes when they're weak, and more importantly, Lifesteal, which is able to increase your damage and healing at the same time. Also, Coco gives you much needed damage reduction and protection, and just fulfills the healer role fantastically. For an A tier, Coco is definitely worth considering. Now, one really common thing people are choosing to do at the moment is running more than one healer on your team, just because that added sustain makes it really difficult to kill you and can help you stretch out a fight so that you win. Do bear in mind, though, there are situations where the fight clock goes all the way down to zero and you can just lose because you didn't kill your opponent quickly enough. So don't forget to prioritize DPS as well. There's definitely reasons to have two tanks and two healers at the same time, but do bear in mind if you're not focusing enough on DPS, that clock can get run down, especially against annoying opponents like Igor and Tamesia who are just going to be running around and avoiding your attacks. Also, if you end up in a mirror match where there's two teams with double healers, then you can really find yourself in an awkward situation where you're just trading blows and it just ends up in a draw. That has happened to me multiple times in honor mode. <laughs> so just bear that in mind. Sometimes you do need a little more DPS, although double healer is an excellent strategy at the right moment. Now, in a league of his own is Reyna, as he's able to swap the positions of enemies, and this can just devastate lineups by throwing DPSs into your team and causing them to die very quickly. And if you're using heroes like Sylvina or Igor or Tomesia, who just want to run around the battlefield, if they end up getting swapped, it doesn't even matter because they want to be in the opponent's grill anyway. So Reyna can be really, really funny for that reason, as he's able to just tear teams apart that rely extremely on tanks. Watch out for this guy, and if you do manage to get a copy of him, you can use him and abuse his teleport ability to give you a a huge dynamic swing in your favor. This is why many people are choosing to grab him as their first pick from the guild shop, and I totally understand why. This ability is bonkers. So when it comes to team building, it's typically really good to have a tank at the front, at least two DPSs, and then healers and supports to help you out. Whether it's support DPSs like Lysa who can help other burst heroes, or maybe you want a secondary tank like Aeron to synergize with someone like Arden who can abuse his control effects, and then have Carolina in there for added control and damage too, that makes a lot of sense. So experiment around with heroes, take some of our recommendations here to put together a really solid team, and let us know which teams you've really been enjoying in the comments section down below. If there's any little tips and tricks you have that weren't mentioned in this video, we'd also love to hear them as we learn and grow on our AFK journey together. Anyway guys, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Until then though, have an amazing week and happy idling.